Hi Chella, thank you for your questions. Let me see if I can maximize this so we can run down on this. I'm sorry, I, I, have no, I don't have the time uh, to edit this, so I'll, I'll be scrubbing through the timeline. So, um, yes, this is a tip given to me by Finn, the creator of Face It. And he said, you know what, if you want uh, this kind of um, exact or precise uh, eye tracking, you need to um, create definitely the the eye itself because he mentioned that it doesn't matter how the object is positioning its own pivot or its own origin <clears throat> it doesn't matter it what matters is the volume he said that face it with uh, will automatically run on a script that will detect the object's volume and automatically place its origin points in the middle so if i have a plane it won't it won't be positioning it won't position the pivot point on back far here as I showed on the video. I did that video because there are other workflows derived from it using Rigify, okay? And this is going to be important later down in the series. But for now, the usual way, as Finn mentioned, is to create an eyeball like this, position it, position it in the correct space, like I'm doing here. Okay, I have two eyeballs, and he said, if you have anime eyes, what you should do is to project their weights into the um, these planes. I'm telling you all of this because I already uh, saw your video and saw that the eye socket itself has a very uh, stylized curve. And there's no way around that except by limiting the rotation of the eye. So in, in your case, in your model, specifically, specifically, your eye will not be able to rotate like 180 left to right. No, it, it's most likely that in your case, your eye will only rotate just about uh, 70 something, 75 degrees left to right. And up and down, it seems it will rotate around 80 to 90 degrees, maybe less, 60 degrees at most. Um, but I cannot certainly say it so, so I'm showing you this because here I'm registering the the geometry, obviously in the register ge objects, because as I mentioned before, once you register left and right eyes, you're going to get that um, weight projected into all of the other objects. So in your case, yes, you need to separate your uh, both both of your eyes in your model. Yes, I know there are, there's a lot of, um, how would I call this, um, preparation before actually jumping into Face It because Face It is thought from the perspective of creating an entire rig using obviously Rigify from Blender, which is a great thing. But it, you certainly have to get a rundown list of things you need prepared beforehand before actually doing this. That's why I, I thought a, of a of, uh, of the idea of showing people how to prepare and do all of this stuff like I mentioned before I have like 32 videos about this so here I am placing the the, the ball into the socket as you can see my ball is uh, is uh, less it's um, smaller than the the eye socket itself because this is the rotation that I need and I know that face it is going to create the center point or the origin point right here which is kind of uh, further than the actual point I needed with it, which is back here, and that is going to be shown later on the on the video series, um, that I have that problem. But this is why I'm showing you this video. I'm sorry, I'm taking too long, but I need to go step by step on this. But there is a way to correct that pivot point, and it actually is called the pivot right here on the on the application. So let me go through this. There they are, both objects. Um, are registered left eyeball, right eyeball, and they continue to go to to go like that. So then you go to the next module, which is rig, and you create obviously the landmarks and stuff. Okay, so you already know how that works. You place it on the base of the chin. Maybe you've read the 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 walkthrough on their website, and yeah, you start like that. That's another thing that is not uh, too intuitive, uh, but I plan to cover that as well. So yeah, here's me placing everything on the mouth stuff. Then later on, we are going to project the, that thing. This line really got me, you know, thinking, okay, that's the base of the jaw. So anyways, you do that. And after you do that, you create the bind. Okay, here's the important part. Here we go. I'm going to be playing this back right now. 
So after you have all the landmarks, obviously you're, you want to go to expressions, but it's going to tell you, please generate the rig first, so that's where you're going to go. And you will not have this available until you create the rig first, because it hasn't been created. Face it does not know what these landmarks are for. They are not complete in the process. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to generate that face rig right there. Um, and then this option right here, will allow us to change the pivot points to create locator empties which is called okay so let's generate that click in there I don't want to fast forward it oh, or else I will miss it um, here we go and now that we have all, all those all of those uh, marks we can access obviously expression but the point that we want to do this uh, for is to get access to those locations or those pivot points for this model okay um, so let's go back to rigs hold on a second let me just fast forward this because I think yes the next step is to bind it so I'm showing here left and right sides clicking on bind yes there it is you click on bind it's going to ask you a lot of these uh, parameters and after you have bind those, obviously you can load your ARCID expressions and things. And there you have it. But let's go back into the uh, pivot point thing. Okay, so now that you have generated everything and you have already the expressions loaded and the controls and stuff, you can go back, and this is the marvelous thing about Faceit, you can go back into Rig. Let me uh, switch back here to object mode click on rig and now you'll see let me hold this close up now you can see that you have back two landmarks so we're going to choose that and it's going to ask us uh, whether to keep the expression or keep the binding weights I'm not going to mark anything because I'm only interested in creating the locator empties and once you click that okay once you click that uh, you're going to get these um, things, which are the locators for the mouth, for the um, eyes. And since I have two different separate objects, I have two different separate locators. You can see, you can read it, the name right there, eye locator L, eye locator right, uh, because this is what it's going to to do with the uh, the position of the previous objects that it found registered as the eyeballs so now you can take them both obviously and start moving them into the position that we were interested in previously so I'm going to grab both of them right there like I mentioned before this is why I edit my videos I know it's taking longer but I hope that you don't mind on this um, and now G Y to restrict the, the movement I'm going to be placing this exactly or just about the position that we mentioned on the first video that I published already on YouTube this is like video 7 <laughs> as you can see right there um, so yeah it's going to be a very long step-by-step uh, -step thing but I'll try to keep it under five minutes so that people you know just watch it and and work with this so let's put this just a, a tad back as you can see this is the the issue that you were mentioning before the center is correctly placed but it's only for one single object on both eyes when in the case of the matter you need both eyes to be separate Okay, it has been already over nine minutes and recording. I'm sorry, I, I will not be editing this, so I apologize. So that's that. And then obviously you locate those um, pivot points or those origin points, like I'm showing you here. And finally, you're done. Then you go back to rig and generate face it rig because you're going to go forward in the process again. It did not went back into the process it did not go back into the process because it did not have the landmarks created but once you go all the way through the expression thing and then you can go back into that workflow you can again regenerate this thing and then rebind the thing 
I know it's amazing, right? This is not this is not a concept that we usually have on on our day to day workflow. That you can go actually back in time and rewrite history. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I got too nerdy there. Anyway, so I hope this uh, helps you, and from there on, you obviously load the fixed expressions and stuff. And yeah, it should work. Uh, one more thing I forgot to mention that Finn mentioned is that you create the objects as the eyeballs and then you create the eyes as the, um, what's it called, the steel, pro the steel, um, steel objects. But then you have these eyes as separate geometry so you can hide them. You can hide them and then you will see your eyes will correctly move whatever you need. Okay, so the eyes, the, the round eyes are just projecting you know, their weights towards these other objects that were registered as flat, I think they're called. I don't remember exactly how they're called. Uh, uh, let me see if I have this recorded. No, it's on the other video. Anyways, so, you know what? Let, let's do this because it's actually important. Oh, here we go. It's called uh, this, eyeballs. This is a rounded thing, as you can see. Well, maybe you cannot see right there. Eyeballs, left and right, okay? And other right, other left, this is what you should register for your flat um, eyelids. Oh, I'm sorry, the flat um, iris. Iris, okay? Just like they say here. And the eyelashes, yes, it did work. But in the end, um, I guess Rigify was not, you know, being too precise about it. And what I end up doing was I generated was I generated the entire thing and afterwards in the regular blender workspace I edited those blend shapes and then mirrored them and that's it because the blinking was the only thing that wasn't working for me everything else was just spot perfect so what I did was just to generate everything outside um, finishing the the face and after that, I just, you know, went there and did my old editing work by manipulating every vertex and just mirroring it onto the other side. And that's it. That's the blink. Because ultimately, you're going to be baking all the blend shapes. Okay, it's been, it's been 12 minutes uh, and you see I had a lot of, I have a lot of work to do. They're calling now. All right, thank you very much and I hope this helps you.